Ayan. Okay. Ay, sorry. Nakamute pala ako. Okay. Ayan. Good evening, everyone. Okay. I think you can... Hopefully, you guys can hear me, no? If you can confirm. I I don't particularly see the list of uh, audience. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I, I think you can hear me naman. So, I think we can start, no? Ayan. So, nakita naman natin yung mga slides for Rio, no? So, saan ka pa? So, we already have... You know, the best service in terms of providing no CPA review in the Philippines. So, iba saan ka pa? So let me just start to present my screen. No, uh, for today, what we'll try to focus on for this discussion, no, is auditing, no, auditing investments. Okay, let me try to share my screen. Okay, let me know if you could see it. Okay, ayan. All right. So, as I've mentioned, no, we'll try to focus on audit of investments for this discussion. So, kapag sinabi mong audit of investments, um, what you try to focus there is to is the auditing procedures, pero definitely magkamukha lang din yan sa financial accounting concepts mo kasi uh, we'll try to uh, review as well what actually is our objective in trying to audit the investments, no. But before everything, but before anything else, no, I, I know that this uh, free webinar series is, uh, I think, a, a different list of topics. So I, I think I'm the last one, no, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, definitely, uh, hopefully, maging, ano, hopefully maging fruitful yung discussion natin. So what we'll try to focus on is a few select topics in audit of investments because definitely we only have limited amount of time. We would not be able to discuss all of the topics kasi medyo marami talaga yan. So for this webinar specifically, we'll just try to focus on a few topics in auditing investments. But of course, we'll still try to um, tackle the key items, no? the, the key concepts. Okay? So as you can see in the slides, we'll try to focus on investments in equities, investments in associates, which is kasama rin sa investment in equities natin. And then lastly, investment in debt. Um, more focusing on the reclassifications because we feel like reclassifications is one of the topics na medyo hindi na rin touch on pag nagdi-discuss ng problems, specifically for auditing problems. Okay? All right. So, uh, buckle on, buckle up, and then we can start start our discussion, no? auditing investments. So, as I've mentioned, no, if you try to discuss auditing as a concept, of course, iba yung concept mo on auditing. Uh, auditing theory, so naanjan yung mga materialities mo, naanjan yung mga planning considerations mo, mga control testing, etc. Yung mga iba't iba mong mga procedures. It is different from financial accounting theory and uh, problem solving. No? Pero pag nag-solve ka ng auditing problems, of course, dapat alam mo pa rin yung, yung financial accounting concepts. Bakit? Kasi let's try to recall what actually is the objective of an audit of financial statements. So an audit of financial statements, okay, as the name suggests, no, an independent auditor okay, steps in and tries to audit no, the financial statements which was prepared by management in the first place. So si management nagpiprepare yan ng financial statement okay, via PFRS or IFRS. So in accordance with PFRS and IFRS, nagpiprepare yan ng unaudited financial statements. And you, eventually, hopefully you guys, no, pag CPA na kayo, if you are already an independent auditor, you would step in. Okay, if you have been engaged to audit the financial statements, you would evaluate no, whether those financial statements are presented fairly no, in accordance with PFRS or FRS. So speaking of auditing problems as a subject, uh, dapat marunong ka rin sa financial accounting concepts mo definitely. Okay? And dapat marunong ka rin sa auditing concepts mo. Pero for this particular webinar, the focus would be more so in discussing okay, uh, financial accounting concepts for investments specifically. Okay? Tapos i-discuss natin as we go along paano ba natin ina-apply yung mga auditing concepts natin, specifically the assertions which are being addressed by the problem as well as a few concepts about materiality kasi na, nakapaloob na rin doon sa problem natin yung materiality. Okay? So as I've mentioned, Kapag tapos na yung audit of the financial statements, okay, the independent auditor will produce the audit report which basically will be an attachment to the audited financial statements. So both of these documents will serve as a package. No? Eventually will be issued to the users. So kapag listed entity yan, pinapublish yan sa PSE Edge, 
or kung hindi, kahit na hindi man yan listed entity, okay, fina-file yan sa BIR as well as the SEC. So, yun yung mga users ng financial statements natin. Okay, just a, a quick recap, no? In terms of the objective actually of an audit of financial statements. Okay? Sige, let's proceed na to our main topic for the day which is investments, no? Investments, these are more broadly no, classified or uh, defined as under as being as belonging no to financial instruments no financial instruments specifically is being addressed by our new standard no IFRS or PFRS 9 so the standard defines financial instruments as any contract no, that gives rise to a financial asset of one entity and a financial liability or an equity instrument of a counterparty or of another entity so again, recap lang tayo. Pag sinabi mong contract, it is a meeting of minds between two parties. So in this instance, yung first counter, yung first party, magkakaroon siya ng financial asset. Yun mismo yung investment na sinasabi natin, which is our topic for today. No? So magkakaroon siya ng financial asset, for example, holdings in the equity or holdings in debt. And the other counterparty, magkakaroon siya ng financial liability or a liability to the holder of those securities. Okay? Or... On the other hand, pwede rin magkaroon ng equity instrument. So pag nag-issue ng shares yung isang counterparty, magkakaroon ng investment yung, count, yung holder and magkakaroon din ng equity component yung issuer sa kanyang financial statements. Okay? So that's basically it. No? In terms of the accounting okay, for financial instruments or investments in general, okay, it depends on the intention of the company or of the entity. Bakit niya ba hinahawakan? Bakit ba siya bumili ng financial instrument or investment na yun in the first place. So, it depends on the business model. Pag sinabi nating business model, it depends on the intention of the company. So, for example, it purchased the financial asset with the purpose of exploiting no? fair value changes in the near term or in the short term. Definitely, ang classification nun would be a trading no? instrument or security. Trading kasi buy and sell. No? Binili niya for the purpose of selling it in the near term. That's the reason why uh, he wants to take advantage okay, of changes in the fair value. So kapag trading yun, for example, the accounting follows okay, follows that classification or follows that specific business model. So let's try. Let's try to list down the different business models no, which would follow the classifications. Okay. So for example, number one, kapag ang business model ng company, if he or she no, purchased the security with the purpose okay with the intention to hold it to collect okay principal and interest so in the standard it is being coined as SPPI no collection of solely for payments of principal and interest no SPPI so kapag ganyan yung intention ng company definitely the classification for that debt instrument would be amortized cost okay debt instrument lang yan ha kasi pag dating naman sa equity instruments wala ka namang collection for principal and interest Okay? So, amortized cost yung classification natin dyan if it is hold to collect. What if, okay, if it, it is held to collect and the company has an intention, okay, to sell that particular investment okay, before maturity. So, hinahawakan mo in the meantime para makakolekta ka ng principal and interest pero um, hindi mo nahaantayin yung maturity ng debt instrument na yun and gusto mo nang i-realize okay, kapag mas mataas na yung fair value versus your current carrying amount, okay, gusto mo nang i-exploit yung change in the fair value, you may also do so. Ganon yung business model, for example, ng company. Ang magiging classification ng debt instrument na yun would be fair value through OCI. Okay, FVOCI. And this is a mandated, no, mandated classification under the standard. Kapag ganito yung business model mo, hold to collect and to sell eventually, dapat FVOCI yung classification natin. Okay? Okay, what if hindi defined okay, yung, yung business model? Uh, typically, this would be a catch-all classification already. And typically, dito mo makikita yung mga helpful trading securities. No? Which as I've mentioned earlier, for example, kapag gusto mag-profit ng company in short-term fluctuations in the market values, he or she may do so. No? Ang magiging classification mo dyan would be fair value through profit or loss. So you remeasure the balance of your investment uh, depende kung ano yung pro, uh, kung fair value at the year end no kung tumataas yan so meron kang mga gains kung bumababa yung fair value uh, meron kang mga losses no and those changes in fair value would be recognized in profit or loss later on illustrate pa natin further kung ano pa yung mga accounting uh, implications natin okay 
And then lastly, may mga exceptions ba tayo, sir? Yes. May mga mangilan-ngilan tayo exceptions in terms of the business model uh, uh, rule. No? So for example, if you have investment in equities, the company by irrevocable election may you know, may classify it as FBOCI. So kapag um, in-elect ng company, no, pinili niya na i-classify yan as FBOCI, he may do so. Pero irrevocable na yung classification nun. No? Hindi mo na ma -re classify out of FBOCI eventually. Okay, so from the initial recognition up until the recognition, kapag binenta mo na or tinanggal mo na sa libro mo yung investment na yun, magiging FBOCI yan up until the end. Okay? And then another, classifi uh, another exception to the business model rule would be if, for example, the company wants to eliminate okay, or reduce accounting mismatch. So for example, karamihan ng mga investments niya are already being measured at FBPL. Okay? By designation, okay, the company may also designate one of its um, investments holdings no? even though hindi, hindi niya fina-follow yung business model na rule. Okay? So by designation, pwede niya i-classify yung kanyang investment by fair value through profit or loss. Okay? So yan yung mga classifications natin. Na recap tayo. So meron tayong amortized cost, meron tayong FVOCI, meron tayong FVPL. Okay. So ano nga ba sir yung accounting implications nitong mga classifications na to? Let's take a look. So in here we are trying to present okay, a summary of those classifications as well as accounting implications. So tignan natin yung classification, tignan natin saan ba ni-recognize yung mga changes in fair value, etc. Okay. So let's take a look first at the classification. Tignan natin kung anong mga applicable investments yung pwede dun sa classification na yon. Let's take a look if pwede bang maging current or non-current. Tignan natin kung paano ba measure initially. So at initial measurement, ano ba yung mga nilalagay natin sa carrying amount ng ating investment. Let's take a look ano ba yung subsequent measurement natin. So for example, pinurchase mo yung investment mo today. Ano ba yung magiging measurement yan at December 31 this year for example. Also, let's take a look at the changes in the fair value. How do we measure that? No? How do you compute okay, your changes in your fair value? And lastly, let's take a look saan ba natin pinipresent yung changes in our fair value. Okay, So i-discuss natin sa table na to. It's basically a summary of all of the concepts. And then let's try to illustrate. No? Let's try to apply by a problem. So we've prepared, I think, around three, three problems. Pero if we have additional time, I've prepared an extra problem around ECL, no? around valuation of investments. Let's uh, take a look kung kaya pa natin within the time provided. Okay, so first classification natin, okay, FVPL, sabi natin kanina. Ito usually yung mga trading, securities, or yung mga catch-all na classification. So kapag FVPL yung classification mo, you could classify your debt or equity under this FVPL designation. Okay, and typically, it is presented as a current asset. Kasi sabi natin kanina, di ba, if the company wants to um, exploit no, changes in the fair value, talagang magiging trading yan. Binili mo yung investment mo today with the intention of selling it within the month, for example. No? Pag talagang nagpa-fluctuate yung fair value. So kapag nagkaroon ka na ng gain, pwede mo nang ibenta, for example. Gusto na ng company na i-realize yung kanyang gain from the change in the fair value. Okay, how about initial measurement? So under the standard, i-measure mo daw at fair value. No? Excluding no? excluding transaction cost. So wag mo daw isama yung transaction cost sa FVPL investments mo at the initial measurement. So expense out mo lang daw yung mga transaction costs mo. Okay. Subsequently, again, since the classification is FVPL, dapat fair value rin yung subsequent measurement mo dyan. Okay, and then how do you measure? Okay, the change in the fair value, straightforward lang. Kunin mo lang yung current fair value mo, okay? And then, i-deduct mo dun sa previous fair value mo. So, if you purchase that particular investment noon-noon pa, kunin mo yung previous carrying amount mo last year, and then i-measure mo yung current fair value at the end of the year this year, yun na yung change in fair value mo. And then, those changes in fair values should be recognized directly in profit or loss. So, kapag marami kang investments, you can imagine, for example, you have five no, FVPL investments. For one investment, for example, meron kang gain. For another investment, meron kang loss. Kunin mo na lang yung net nun. Yun yung e-journal entry mo. E-post mo sa general ledger mo. Okay? Yun na yung i-recognize mo sa profit or loss. O, diba? Straightforward lang yung FVPL. How about FVOCI? By irrevocable election, sabi natin kanina. So for FVOCI na irrevocable election, let's focus on that 
kasi equity siya. Okay? So only equity investments can be irrevocably elected to be classified as FBOCI. Okay, in terms of presentation, you could either present it as current or non-current. Pero in general, okay, FVOCI classification for equity investments are presented as non-current. Kasi ang gusto mo naman dun sa equity would be to hold it okay, for a long term. So typically non-current yan. Pero pwede rin, mag, pwede rin naman maging current. Okay? In terms of the initial measurement, no, i-measure mo daw fair value plus transaction cost. So any transaction cost at the date of acquisition, i-capitalize mo daw. No? That's compared with the FVPL classification. No? Doon sa FVPL, ini-expense out natin. Dito sa FVOCI, let's capitalize the transaction cost. Okay? In terms of subsequent measurement, same goes through with FVPL. I-measure mo at fair value. Any change in the fair value, okay, you uh, recognize in OCI. No? OCI ito, lagyan natin. So any change in the fair value, lagay mo sa OCI. Without recycling. So ang ibig sabihin natin sa without recycling na yan, Kapag binenta mo na yung FVOCI na holding mo in equity securities, okay, the accumulated OCI which has been recorded in your uh, balance sheet, nakalagay sa balance sheet mo, directly i-reclassify mo yon into retained earnings. No? Mapupunta agad yan sa retained earnings. Hindi na yan dadaan ng profit or loss. Yun ang tinatawag nila na without recycling. Okay? This is compared to the next classification which is FVOCI na debt. So sabi natin kanina, Kapag ang business model mo for a particular debt holding is to hold it, okay, to collect principal and interest, and eventually, kapag tumaas-taas yung fair value, gusto mo na rin siya ibenta, your business model would be basically to hold and to collect. So mandatory kapag ganun yung business model mo, minamandate ka ng standard na i-measure mo at FVOCI. So FVOCI yung classification natin ng debt instrument na yun. In terms of classification, it's either current or non-current. So pagdating mo dun sa breakdown ng debt instrument mo na yun, under FVOCI method kasi, magpe-prepare ka pa dyan ng amortization table. Okay? So if you can imagine, and, and I'm hoping that you are also already familiar by now, okay, there is a, no current, a, non a current and a non-current no, portion to that amortization table. So pwedeng current or non-current yung presentation natin dyan sa balance sheet natin. Okay. In terms of the initial measurement, no? fair value plus transaction cost tayo dyan pag FBOCI na debt. Subsequently, yung fair value measurement mo would also apply to FBOCI. Pero uh, as a footnote here, no? just remember, kapag FBOCI na debt ka, the amortization, you should also adjust the amortization. Uh, you should also adjust the previous carry amount okay? by the amortization using the effective interest method. So uh, FBOCI is actually a combination no, of sort of the amortized cost as well as fair valuation. So ina-amortize mo pa rin yung discounts and premiums mo using the effective interest method. Uh, take note, effective interest method. And then eventually nire-reprice mo to the fair value. Okay? So kunin mo yung previous carrying amount mo, i-adjust mo for the amortization of discount and premium, and then i-reprice mo to fair value, whatever that is. Yung mapupunta doon, yung change in that fair value would be lodged in OCI as well, OCI. Okay, in this case, it is with recycling. No? Kapag debt instrument na FVOCI, once you derecognize that debt investment or that debt holding, no? yung accumulated na OCI mo na nakapasok sa balance sheet, i-record mo yan sa profit or loss in the year when you derecognize the FVOCI or you reclassified out of FVOCI. Okay. Just remember, yung accumulated OCI mo dyan, okay, that is with recycling. So, ibig sabihin yan, i-record yan eventually sa profit or loss. Okay? And then last, yan, last classification na tayo, amortized cost. Sabi natin kanina, kapag yung business model mo is hold to collect, okay, solely for payments of principal and interest, di ba? yun lang yung gusto mo dun sa investment mo, yun lang yung intentions mo, magiging amortized cost ka. Definitely, that is debt. Kasi wala namang di ba, collection ng principal and interest sa ating equities. No? Classification, current or non-current din. Similar case with FVOCI. You know, merong current and non-current portion yung amortization table natin. In terms of initial measurement, no, fair value plus transaction cost ka raw, sabi ng standard. Okay. Subsequently, kapag amortized cost ka, measure mo yan at amortized cost. Again, footnote via the effective interest method. Okay? 
via the effective interest method. That is a requirement of the standard. So if you can remember yung effective interest method mo, that involves okay, amortizing your premiums and discounts. No? Hindi yan, uh, hindi yan kumbaga at the onset nire-recognize mo na agad yung difference mo from your cost versus your face. So dapat effective interest method ka dyan. And in terms of changes in fair value, wala ka naman changes dyan okay, because you are under the amortized cost uh, classification. Okay, ayan, medyo marami yan. No? Pero let's try to illustrate that via a problem para at least maging mas klaro sa atin. Tignan natin kung saan ba natin nire-recognize itong mga changes in fair value natin eventually. And tignan natin kung ano yung mga subsequent measurement natin depending on the holding. No? Another uh, thing to point out pala dito is that in terms of the initial measurement, okay, lahat yan, okay, fair value plus transaction cost yung measurement natin lahat yan. Except, okay, except FVPL. Okay, pag titignan mo itong FVPL classification, fair value lang talaga yan. So the general rule as stated in the standard, yung initial measurement mo ng lahat ng investments mo would be fair value plus TC, you know? fair value plus transaction costs. Except for FVPL, which is mag-fair value ka lang. Okay? Alright. So I think that's it for that slide. Punta tayo sa problem. Okay, punta tayo sa problem. Let me just present my screen, no? Let's try to illustrate how do we actually apply that para at least ma-appreciate natin yung mga rules natin on classification as well as the accounting impact. Okay. Uh, problems? Okay. Yan. Hopefully you can see it, no? Ah, okay. There you go. And hopefully you can see it. No, let me know if you can't. No, uh, and then I'll try to uh, present again. Pero yan. Basically, this is our problem. Let's try to illustrate. No. So as in the case for auditing problems, ah, uh, medyo mahaba talaga yan. So I'm assuming that majority of the audience pala are uh, CPA candidates. No, CPA candidates. Pero I would understand na pwedeng maging mix yung audience natin. There may be others na. Uh, gusto lang mag-refresher okay, sa ating accounting concepts. Uh, pero majority, I would assume that uh, we are all or we are majority CPA candidates. So either you are preparing for the board exam currently or um, pwedeng undergraduate ka pa lang. So it's a, a good ano, discussion as well para ma-review na natin yung mga concepts natin around investments. Okay, sige. So let's try to illustrate. As, as I was mentioning, no, in terms of auditing problems, Okay, medyo mahaba talaga yung presentation yan because number one, uh, auditing problems is trying to test you on your ability or on your mastery of the topic. So, natitest dyan yung recall mo ng concept and tinitest ka rin yan definitely on your accuracy. Okay? Um, another, another thing which is being tested is your patience. No? Kasi usually kapag sa mga auditing problems, medyo mahaba talaga yan. Dapat maging patient ka. Dapat chachagain mo talaga yung problem na yan for you to be able to arrive. Okay? at the correct answer at the most efficient ah, sorry using the most efficient um, technique there is no so dapat alam mo yung concept maalala mo yung concept at the date of your examination and dapat alam mo yung mga technique para mas mapadali mas mapabilis yung solving mo kasi uh, in terms of the CPA board exam syempre limited tayo sa oras diyan mas gusto pa rin nating mag-solve ng mas mabilis pero definitely without sacrificing accuracy. Okay. So dapat master mo talaga yung topic. Okay. So for this particular discussion, na discuss natin yung classifications, ano yung accounting, no? Accounting impact. And then let's try to discuss, no? Uh, let's try to illustrate by a problem. Okay. So let's read first the problem, let's try to familiarize and then let's proceed to our solution, no? Okay. So if you guys can see my screen yan, problem one. Let's try to um, assess kung ano ba talaga, gaano ba kahirap to, ano ba yung kailangan, ano ba yung requirement ng problem. Okay. So problem one yun, you were engaged to audit the 2022 financial statements of NGL Incorporated. Okay. So you are the independent auditor in this case. no? You gathered the following information uh, regarding your audit client. So naanjan yung mga information Supposedly, you know, presumably presented by the client, pero you could cons already consider those as audit evidence. On December 31, 2021, NGL Incorporated or our client, okay, 
uh, the schedule of investments of the client or the subledger of the investment showed the following holdings. And so marami siyang holdings. Uh, the company or your client has holdings in various securities. Meron ding classification na sinabi. Meron ding cost. Okay, the cost will be the initial acquisition cost. And meron din nilagay na market value. As of, kailan? As of December 31, 2021. Actually, let's try to highlight. No? Ayan. So, andito na tayo. So, ito yung mga sinasabi natin na holdings ng company. Ayan, iba't iba. So, itong market value na hinahighlight natin ngayon, that is kailan? As of December 31, 2021. So, yan yung magiging reference market value natin eventually kapag try natin isolve yung problem. Okay. Next section. Yan. During 2022, the following transactions took place. Ayan. So, analyze natin yung susunod na table na to. So, meron kang date. Okay. Binigay yung details. And then, meron kang audit remarks nakalagay sa tabi. Okay. So, basahin natin mabilis. So, for January, you receive semi-annual interest. Okay. No problem. March 1, you purchase additional shares. The next two items, you sold your shares. No? Nagbenta ka ng equity mo. For July 1, okay, you receive semi-annual interest. So, no problem as well. On September 1, okay, you purchase 400 of PQRs. Okay, so, that's another investee with assume. Five-year, 12%, 1,000 bonds at 93 plus accrued interest. Okay. So, tignan agad natin yung audit remarks. So, what we're trying to do here, okay, pinapasadahan muna natin yung problem no, para ma-assess natin gano'n ba kahirap, gano'n ba kahaba, ano ba yung mga kakailanganin natin na information eventually. Sige, basahin natin yung audit remarks. No? Sabi sa problem, okay, you determine that using the straight line method is acceptable as differences from using the effective interest method is immaterial. Okay, so sinabi dito effective interest method, does that ring a bell? Yes. Kasi sabi natin kanina, kapag amortized cost or FVOCI yung classification mo for your debt instruments, okay, yung amortization mo ng premium or discount should be uh, amortized no? using the effective interest method, no? hindi straight line. Um, it is required by the standard to use the effective interest method. Pero in terms of audit, yan, specifically for audit, ang sabi dito, okay lang. Di ba? Sabi mo, sabi ng auditor, no? acceptable lang na gumamit ng straight line kasi immaterial. Again, in auditing financial statements, you still have the constraint of materiality. Remember that. No? Pag sinabi sa problem na okay lang kasi immaterial, then that's fine. No? Kasi uh, we are not providing 100% guarantee that the financial statements are in accordance with the standard. No? Only those material amounts. No? So, meron pa rin tayong constraint of materiality. So, pag sinabi dyan na immaterial yung difference and acceptable yung straight line, and the Go ahead. No? Straight line yung gamitin natin. That's fine. Next section. Yan, binigay tayo ng market value. The market values of the shares and bonds on December 31, 2022 are as follows. So meron kang security. Meron kang market value. So gagamitin din natin yan supposedly eventually. Okay. So the requirements. Okay. Determine the following. Unrealized holding gain to be reported in the 2022 income statement. And then unrealized holding loss to be reported in the 2022 balance sheet. Okay. So himayin lang natin to no. Yung first requirement ang tinatanong sa atin diyan, unrealized gain or loss. Saan daw? Sa 2022 income statement. Ano ba yung lumalabas sir sa 20 sa income statement natin? Okay, if you guys can recall. Sige, sulat natin dito. Um yung profit and loss mo, profit or loss mo, okay, that is being presented in your income statement, di ba? Tapos kapag nag-add ka pa diyan ng OCI component, that would be your comprehensive income already. Comprehensive income. Income. Which is being presented saan? Sa statement of comprehensive income. Okay. So, pag tinanong ka ng problem, magkano yung unrealized holding gain na ipipresent sa income statement, ang kailangan mo lang hanapin dyan would be actually your profit or loss, unrealized gains and losses, no? Yan lang yung kukunin mo. Kasi income statement lang yung tanong. Hindi naman siya nagsabi ng statement of comprehensive income. So it's very technical and dapat maalala mo na hindi kasama sa prof sa income statement yung OCI. Okay? So profit or loss lang yung compute natin dyan later. How about the second question? Ang, sinabi niya, ang tinanong dito, unrealized holding loss to be reported in the 2022 balance sheet. So pag sinabi mong balance sheet yan, okay, Ang ibig sabihin niyan yung accumulated na OCI mo. Okay? So the accumulated OCI as of 
okay, the December 31, 2022 balance sheet. Kasi pa paano ba napipresent yun? So, kapag meron kang FVOCI na holdings, okay, yung changes dun sa fair value nung, OC, nung FVOCI na yun, pinipresent mo yan as a component of OCI sa Statement of Comprehensive Income, no? sa SCI natin. Okay? So, yung changes in the fair value in the current year, ha? pinipresent mo yan sa current year Statement of Comprehensive Income. And then, pagdating yan sa Statement of Changes in Equity, okay, ipipresent mo yan as a change in OCI. Okay? So, the change in the current year, mapupunta yan sa Statement of Changes in Equity. So, yung Statement of Changes in Equity, hopefully you guys can remember, meron kang beginning equity, or for example, beginning OCI. Ia-add mo yung change in OCI, which is basically this one. No? And then, makukuha mo yung ending OCI. So, yung ending OCI na to, yan yung eventually mapupunta sa statement of financial position or yung balance sheet mo. Okay. So, actually, the statement of changes in equity is the bridge okay, between the statement of comprehensive income and your statement of financial position. So, yung tinatanong dito sa problem, magkano raw yung accumulated no, OCI na nakapresent sa balance sheet mo. So, that basically means to say, Starting from the inception, kung kailan mo binili, okay, yung yung ah uh, yung yung investment, i-compare mo yon sa current fair value mo, yun yung inception to date na unrealized holding loss mo, okay, in the balance sheet. Okay, just remember that na, okay. So let's try to let's try to solve. Let's try to solve. So take take na natin yung problem kanina, yun yung requirement. So in terms of solving, okay, investment problems, what I always suggest is that the CPA candidate should always be patient. So, dapat matyaga ka. Okay? Dapat tsatsagain mo talaga yan. So, when I try to say you should be patient, dapat good form yung solution mo. No? Dapat good form. Kasi uh, you will eventually have the chance na balikan yung solution mo. No? Kasi kapag hindi mo mababalikan yung solution mo, pagdating mo sa dulo and walang lumabas na answer sa problem, okay? masasayang na yung oras mo kasi hindi ka makakapag-focus dun sa mga items na kailangan mong balikan. Okay. So auditing problems dapat patient ka. Okay. So let's try to tabulate. Let us try to present via a good form solution. So in terms of this um in terms of this problem, hatiin actually natin no, hatiin natin yung holdings natin into equity and into debt. So equity muna tayo. Lista muna natin yung equity natin. The pro forma table for this solution would be uh, indicating no. Parang basically i-recreate natin yung subledger ng entity. So, lagay muna natin date of purchase. Lagay natin kung anong holding, no? kung anong entity. Lagay din natin kung ilang number of shares. O for example, lagay muna natin classification para alam natin. Lagay din natin yung number of shares. Lagay din natin yung cost. Lagay din natin yung reference book value. And then, lagay natin yung price per share at year end. And then, i-compute natin yung market value at year end. No? And then, For the requirement itself, okay, pag na-plot na natin yan, isolve na natin. So, we have unrealized gain or loss to be presented in profit or loss. no? Income statement to IS. Okay, and then we also have unrealized gain or loss, OCI. Okay, ito naman yung ipipresenta natin sa statement of comprehensive income. Remember, may distinction yun, ha? And then lastly, ito yung requirement actually ng problem, no? statement of financial position, unrealized gain or loss, OCI, na accumulated sa statement of financial position natin. Okay? So lagay muna natin yung date of purchase. Isa-isay natin for our equities. No? So ano ba yung mga equities natin dito? We have number one, ABC. Okay, lagay muna natin. So date of purchase mo, kailan mo ba nilagay yan? Ah, kailan, mo ba, kailan ba na-recognize yan? During 2022, diba? coming from previous year na yan, so pwede natin ilagay from the beginning balances. Okay? Lagay din natin kung anong entity yan, ABC. Let's also indicate the classification. So kung trading yan, ano ulit yung trading? If you guys can recall, FVPL. Okay, FVPL. Number of shares. Okay, number of shares lagay natin. Actually, tignan natin sa ilalim. So dito, meron tayong beginning balance ng ABC. Check nyo yung transactions ng 2022. Meron bang disposal ng ABC shares dyan para malaman natin yung remaining? Lagay natin dito as remaining. No? 
remaining number of shares as of year end ng 2022? Wala. So ang binenta mo actually dito is ito lang, no? DEF and JKL. Pero kay ABC, hindi naman nagbago. So the number of shares remains unchanged. 10,000 pa rin yan. 10,000 pa rin yan. In terms of the cost, yan, lagay lang natin, 2.5. Balik natin yung highlight. 2.5. Ah, sorry, 2.5 million pesos. In terms of the reference book value, sir, ano ba yung um, importance ng reference book value na yan? So remember, what we're trying to calculate here is the unrealized gains and losses or the changes in the fair value. So maglalagay tayo dyan ng reference book value in terms of our table or tabular presentation para malaman natin kung saan ba natin i-compare okay, yung year-end. Okay, year-end na market value natin. So kukunin natin yung price and yung market value eventually, compare natin sa reference book value. Ngayon, kailangan nating ihiwalay okay, yung reference book value dyan, in terms of our solution kasi nag-iiba yan uh, pagdating sa mga iba pang holdings natin. Later on, may illustrate pa natin yan. Pero for specifically for ABC holdings, okay, yung reference book value mo dyan, pag tinatry mo compute yung unrealized gains and losses mo, would basically be your previous okay, previous market value. So that's 2.5 million, 2.5. Okay, lagay lang natin. 2.525 million. Okay. Lagay na rin natin yung price per share kasi mag-compute tayo ng unrealized gain or loss. No? Hanapin natin yung price per share dito sa ilalim. Magkano ba yung market value daw ni ABC stocks? So that would be 200 uh, pesos point 20. No? 235.20. That's the price per share. And then, para makompute natin yung market value at year and multiply mo lang yung remaining number of shares no? by the price per share. That's basically it. And yung market value mo. Okay. So since naan dito na tayo, let's try to compute na ilan ba yung unrealized gain and losses natin na ipipresent natin sa profit or loss or sa income statement natin. Kunin mo yung market value mo, which is 2352, less your reference book value, which is essentially your previous market value. So negative 173, loss tayo dyan kay ABC. Okay? Meron ba tayong OCI? Wala. Kasi FVPL tayo. Okay? Next holding, DEF. Yan. Tira natin. Ano ba nangyari kay DEF? So, kailan mo yung, kailan yung date of purchase ni DEF? Matagal mo nang pinurchase yan. So, lagay natin. Beginning. Anong entity yan? DEF? Ano yung classification niya? FVPL. Kasi trading ka. Number of shares remaining. No? Ang kailangan natin is the remaining number of shares, remaining cost, and remaining reference book value para makuha natin yung appropriate adjustment as of year end. So for DEF, sabi nga natin kanina, meron kang beginning balance. Tapos dito sa transactions mo sa baba, nagbenta ka ng DEF. So you actually sold 4,000 shares of DEF for 138 per share. So nung April 15, 2022. So coming from your beginning balance or beginning number of shares of 8,000, nagbenta ka ng 4,000. So nakalahati. So ilan na lang yung number remaining number of shares natin? 4,000 na lang, di ba? 4,000. I-bold natin kasi alam natin na nagbago. In terms of the cost, okay, meron kang cost na 2.1 million previously. Pero that pertains to the full 8,000 shares that you hold initially. So nung nagbenta ka ng kalahati niyan, syempre makakalahati din yung cost base mo. Okay. So i-divide mo sa 2. So that's 2.1 million divided by 2 basically, di ba? Kalahati. And then your reference book value would be your previous market value as well. Pero since nag-dispose ka ng investment mo, kalahati na rin yung previous okay, market value mo. Huwag mo kalimutan. So that's 2,056,500. Hatiin mo, kalahati. That's 1.028,250 million. Ayan, nilagay natin. Sige, since naandito na tayo, no? naandito na tayo, yung price per share natin. Ilan yung price per share mo ng DEF sa baba? Ayan, 221 pesos. Okay, same computation. I-multiply mo yung price per share with the number, the remaining number of shares para makuha mo yung current market value ng holding mo kay DEF. And then same, same drill, no? You get the current market value less the reference book value which is half of the previous market value kasi nga nagbenta ka, nag-dispose ka ng kalahati ng holdings mo. So that's negative 144.250 as the unrealized holding loss no, for DEF. Okay, next holding tayo. GHI, ano ba itong GHI? These are bonds, no? So mamaya muna yan. Equities muna tayo, equities. 
So, proceed tayo sa next holding. Kay JKL, meron kang 10,000 shares at the beginning of the period. So, lagay natin beginning. Holding for JKL. Ano yung classification? FVOCI. So, you have FVOCI, Investment in Equities. Okay. Ilan na lang yung remaining number of shares natin kay, FBO, uh, kay JKL? So, meron kang initial holding na 10,000 shares. Tapos, tignan natin nasa ilalim. You sold. Okay. You sold 4,000 JKL shares on okay, May 4, 2022. So, coming from the beginning uh, number of shares of 10,000, nagbenta ka ng 4,000. So, ilan na lang yung remaining mo dyan? 6,000. Okay. 6,000 na lang. So, same drill with ano no? With DEF, kapag nagdi-dispose ka ng investments mo, okay, the remaining cost as well as the remaining reference book value would also uh, change no? in proportion to the number of shares that you dispose of. So yung cost mo dyan, that would basically be 2.18 million. Okay, multiply that by the remaining okay, remaining holdings. So that's 6,000, 6 over 10. Yan na lang yung naiiwan, natitira. So that's 1.308. Uh, million, okay? In terms of the reference book value, same drill. Kunin mo yung 2.26 million na market value mo kay JKL. 260. Multiply that by 6 over 10. So, if it's as if ipoproportion lang natin. Ipoproportion lang natin. Okay. Kunin na rin natin yung price per share at year end ni JKL. Nandito na rin sa ilalim. It's 215.5. Okay. 215.5. And your market value would basically be the same. No? Multiply mo yung price per share with the remaining number of shares. So you have a year-end market value of 1.293 million. Okay. In terms of the classification, okay. paano ba yung magiging classification natin dyan? Ano yung measurement natin? So in the statement of comprehensive income, ano yung OCI na ipipresent natin? Again, remember, itong statement of comprehensive income na yan, that would basically be your current year change in market value. So kunin mo yung year-end market value mo dito, less your reference book value, which is your previous market value. Tama? So yan yung magiging present mo sa statement of comprehensive income, which is 63,000 loss. Okay, how about your unrealized gain or loss na ipipresent mo sa balance sheet or sa statement of financial position? As we've mentioned earlier, no? Ang ipipresent natin sa statement of financial position would basically be our accumulated OCI. So starting from the very beginning, kung kailan mo pinurchase yung FVOCI investment mo na yon, i-accumulate mo. Sabi ni standard, i-accumulate mo yung changes in the fair value and then ipresent mo as a separate component of equity sa balance sheet mo. Tama? So paano natin mas-shortcut yon? Kasi hindi naman nasa, nasa atin sinabi kung kailan ba pinurchase yung investment kay JKL na yan. So, as you mentioned earlier, yung shortcut yan would basically be just to get your market value at your end less your cost. Yan yung acquisition cost mo kasi. So, lahat ng changes no, coming from this cost up until the year end market value na accumulate na yan sa statement of financial position mo. So, that's negative 15,000 accumulated other comprehensive loss, okay, specifically connected to the JKL holdings, to the JKL equity, okay. Oh, next holding tayo, MNO shares, equity pa rin to. So, meron na yan at the very beginning of the year. That's uh, holding and MNO. Yung classification yan is FVOCI. In terms of the number of shares, okay, tignan natin yung ilalim. Meron ba tayong disposal ng MNO shares? Wala. So, hindi tayo nag-dispose. So we have 20,000 shares remaining at the end. No? In terms of the cost, since hindi naman nagbago, hindi rin magbago yung cost natin. Reference book value, hindi rin nagbago yung holding natin. Walang disposal. 2.1 million pa rin yan. No? Then in terms of the price per share, yan, i-plot na natin. Since naan dito naman na tayo, kunin mo yung share price ni MNO. So that's 154 pesos. Ito yung naka-highlight. No? Okay. And then, compute mo na yung market value mo. So that's basically multiplying the remaining number of shares with the price per share as well. Okay. And then, same drill with the previous FVOCI uh, holding natin, which is JKL, kay MNO, for you to get the unrealized gain and loss sa statement of comprehensive income mo, kung ano yung market value dito, i-deduct mo sa reference book value. Ang makukuha mo dyan would be the OCI presented in the statement of comprehensive income. So that's 980,000 no? 
other comprehensive income in the statement of comprehensive income. Same goes through with uh, the statement of financial position. Kunin mo yung market value mo at year end less the cost. So inception to date, yung accumulated OCI, other comprehensive income na nakapresent as a separate component of equity would be 1.1 million already. Okay, so 1.1 million na yan. Okay, ayan na yan. Tapos, meron pa ba tayong ibang equity holdings? Yes, meron pa. Nung binasa natin yung transactions ng 2022, nag-purchase daw tayo ng ABC equity, additional 3,000. So, hiwalay natin ilagay yun sa ating subledger. No? So, kailan yung date of purchase niyan? March 1, 2022. Okay, kanino? ABC. Ano daw yung classification? Trading. Again, remember, pag trading security yan, magiging FVPL yung classifications natin dyan. Okay, in terms of the number of shares, kaka-purchase mo pa lang yan, hindi mo pa naman binibenta, so 3,000 yung number of shares mo dyan. And in terms of the cost, okay, nakalagay lang naman dyan yung cost, which is the initial measurement, no? 459,000, ito, ito naka-highlight. Okay, in terms of the reference book value, uh, dito na natin na-distinguish uh, between those which are already present at the beginning versus those which we've only purchased during the year. Kasi pag nakaka-purchase mo pa lang yan during the year, that particular holding, hindi mo pa nare-revalue yan definitely. No? So yung reference book value mo for you to be able to compute your unrealized gains and losses as of year end would basically be equivalent to your initial measurement, which is your cost. No? Which is in this case, no? 459000 and then i-plot na natin magkano yung price per share ni ABC. Meron na tayo di sa taas. Kunin lang natin. That's 235.2 pesos per share. And then compute na rin natin yung market value. 235.2 per share. Multiply that by the number of shares. So that's 705,600,000. Okay? Okay. So same drill tayo. Since FVPL yan, trading yan, para makompute natin yung market value, kunin mo yung latest market value. Less mo yung reference book value, which as we've mentioned, in this case, it's the acquisition cost. No? Kasi hindi mo pa naman nire-measure yan. Wala pang intervening balance sheet date yung tinatawag nila, kaya hindi mo pa nire-measure. So yung reference book value mo dyan, or yung carrying amount mo would be the 459,000 still. Okay, So you have a gain of 246,600 na profit or loss, no? unrealized holding gain coming from the trading security. Oh, that's basically it for our equities, no? So, yan lang yung mga equities natin. So, let's try to get the total already. Tapos, isunod natin yung debt, okay, debt, measure, uh, debt holdings natin. So, yan na yung total natin. Okay, how about our debt? Okay, debt, debt instruments. Okay, so meron tayong date of purchase. Date of purchase, meron din tayong entity, lagay din natin. Lagay din natin yung initial na classification. Lagay din natin yung number of shares. Oh, sorry. So instead na number of shares for debt, okay, ang magiging basis nyo kasi in terms of measuring debt would be basically your face amount. Okay, later on, illustrate natin. So lagay natin yung face amount dyan. Lagay mo rin dyan yung acquisition cost, definitely. Meron ka reference book value. And then, instead na price per share for debt, Ang lalagay natin dyan is the quoted price. Okay? Para makuha natin yung market value eventually. So same yan. No? Ito yung remaining face amount. Meron kang year end. And then meron ka rin um, determination kung ano yung recognize mo sa income statement, etc. Okay. So unahin muna natin. Analyze natin. Then explain natin um, how do we actually fill up this subledger. So for our debt, ilan ba yung debt instruments natin dito? We have one. No? GHI. Do we have another? Yes, meron pa tayo isa, which is ito, yung PQR. So meron tayong GHI, meron tayong PQR. Meron bang disposal na nangyari with this regard to this uh, debt instruments? Wala. So starting from the very beginning, hawak mo na yung GHI na yan. So lagay natin. GH, ah, sorry, beginning. Okay, the entity is GHI. No? Ano yung classification mo kay GHI? Trading. So kapag trading yan, FVPL tayo dyan. Yung face amount mo, kasi kailangan natin yon for debt instruments, i-determine natin. Ano ba yung sabi sa problem? So for this particular holding, no, you have 10% GHI bonds purchased at face value. So yung purchase price mo dyan is equivalent to the face value. So wala kang discount, wala kang premium. 
Okay? Smack dab equal yung face value mo with your acquisition cost. So, the cost here is 500,000. So, lagay natin 500,000 as the cost. Okay? Ayan. In terms of the reference book value, since FVPL to, same same case with the FVPL ng mga equities natin, okay? the, F, uh, the reference book value would basically be our previous market value. So, in this instance, meron tayong previous market value dito, 373, 500. Okay? Sige, lagay na rin natin yung quoted price dito. Kunin natin sa ilalim. So, for GHI, yung quoted price natin is 82.22. So, paano ba nating interpret yun, sir, pagdating sa measurement ng ating fair value? So, pag nag-state kasi ng market value for bonds or debt instruments, yung quoted price is actually a percentage of the face amount of that particular holding. So, for this instance, yung 82.22 na yan, yung 82.22 na yan, that's the quoted price. You state, kunin mo yung face amount, multiply mo sa 82.22% nung uh, face amount nung bond para makuha mo yung market value. That's basically how you interpret the quoted price. So, for this instance, Lagay natin no, 0 0.8222 and i-multiply mo yung face amount mo okay, by the quoted price. Yan yan naman yung measurement natin ng fair value. Okay. Ganyan kasi yung standard way of presenting the fair value of listed debt instruments. Okay. And then, i-measure na natin ano ba yung mga mag magpapalit dito. So, pag trading yan, same drill with trading, FVPL classifications above, Para makuha mo yung income statement and realized gains and losses mo, kunin mo yung market value less your previous reference book value. So makukuha mo dyan is 37,600 pesos. Okay, that's basically it for GHI. Okay, punta naman tayo kay PQR. So sabi natin, during the year, okay, nag-purchase ka. Actually, on September 1, nag-purchase ka ng PQR share uh, debt. So you purchased 5 years. Uh, 400 of PQRs, 5-year, 12%, 1,000 bonds at 93 plus accrued interest. So, same case, no? pag nagsasabi tayo ng price ng bonds, pag sinabi dito na 93, ang ibig sabihin yan, yung purchase price mo is 93% of the face amount of the bonds. Okay? So, ganyan yung interpretation natin dyan. Plus accrued interest. Kasi usually, if you purchase a bond, Within interest dates, kailangan mo ring bayadan yung interest receivable. Kasi effectively, natotransfer sa'yo yung right over the receivable pero effectively hindi mo na-earn yung receivable. So kapag nag-purchase ka plus accrued interest na sinabi ng problem, madadagdagan pa yung purchase price mo on top of the quoted price. Okay? So, sinabi dito, the bonds are dated January 1, 2020. The bonds were designated as FVOCI, Fair Value Through Other Comprehensive Income. And are amortized using the straight line method. Again, binasa na natin ito kanina. Sabi natin, uh, nag-amortize yung company using the straight line method. Pero ikaw, as the auditor, you've determined that the straight line method is acceptable. Kasi immaterial lang naman yung differences niyan between what the standard is requiring, which is the effective interest method, versus the straight line method. No? So okay lang, acceptable. Oh, sige. So pag sinabi ng auditor na acceptable, well and good, okay. mag-straight line method of amortization tayo. So, ano ba yung sinabi natin kanina in terms of measuring fair value changes pagdating sa FVOCI na debt? So, again, kapag nag-measure ka ng FVOCI na debt, debt, yung initial measurement mo dyan would be your fair value plus your transaction cost. Di ba? And then, one peculiar thing or yung kakaiba sa FVOCI na debt is that subsequently, so initial measurement mo, di ba? fair value plus transaction cost, explain natin doon. So yung initial. Okay. Fair value plus transaction cost. No? And then eventually, kakailanganin mong mag-prepare ng amortization table. So you adjust that for any amortization. No? Any amortization. So you get your initial carrying amount. Okay? You adjust that for amortization. So magkakaroon ka ng deduction dyan or uh, addition. Depende kung premium or discount. And then you reprice. Or you remeasure, remeasure at your end fair value, your end fair value. So kung ano man yung makuha mo dyan, okay, at your end FV, na lang. So kung ano man yung makuha mo dyan, okay, kunwari XX, that would be your FVOCI adjustment for the current year, okay? OCI in the Statement of Comprehensive Income for the current year. 
Okay. So, ang kakaiba dito, again, as I've mentioned, ang kakaiba kasi dito is that um, fair value plus transaction cost yung initial measurement mo and then eventually, okay, during the year, ina-adjust mo yan for your amortization. Pero every year end, okay, nire-remeasure mo yan at fair value. Kaya nga FBOCI ka. So, any difference no, coming from this calculation would be your OCI amount to be recognized in the statement of comprehensive income. Okay? Yan. So, let's try to illustrate. Let's try to illustrate. Sige, balik tayo sa problem. Okay, let's try to illustrate. Hopefully, kasha pa. Okay. Ayan. So, ganyan yung measurement natin. So, for this particular instance, no, PQR, ang sabi niya, okay, ang sabi niya is basically, FBOCI yung classification natin, di ba? So, lagay muna natin. Date of purchase, kailan ba? September 1, 2022. The entity is PQR. Classification mo is FBOCI. No? Meron kang face amount. So, magkano yung face amount yan? Nag, uh, bumili ka ng 400 bonds, tapos 1,000 yung face amount. So, multiply mo lang. 400 times 1,000. Okay. In terms of the cost, okay, ano yung magiging cost mo dyan? Sabi mo, quoted price mo is 93. So, kunin mo yung face amount for 100,000, you multiply that by 93% or 0 0.93. Which as we mentioned earlier, it is stated as a percentage of the face amount. So, ganyan yung calculation natin na acquisition cost. No? 372. Okay. In terms of the reference book value, dito na tayo medyo magkakatalo. Kasi hindi yan straightforward na kukunin mo yung current cost mo. Kasi as we've mentioned, kunin mo tong initial carrying amount mo, which is this one, no? 372. Wala naman transaction cost na binigay dyan. I-adjust mo yan for your amortization, which is computed via the straight line method sinabi sa problem. And then eventually, i-remeasure mo at your end fair value. Yun yung magiging makukuha mo dito eventually, di ba? Yun yung magiging unrealized holding gains and losses mo sa OCI. Okay? Sige. So the reference book value, paano natin compute dyan? So, kunin muna natin yung um, discount or premium natin. Magkano ba yung face natin? Kanin, uh, sinabi na natin kanina, which is 400,000. Versus our acquisition cost, which is 372. Yan, nakalagay niya sa taas. So, ano yan? Discount ba yan or premium? That is definitely a discount kasi pinurchase natin at a lower price um, versus the face amount. No? So, meron tayong 28,000 na discount na i-amortize natin para makuha natin itong naka-highlight, okay, pang-adjust dun sa initial carry amount. So, how do we amortize that? Via the straight line method. So, ilan na lang ba yung remaining term nung um, debt instrument na to? So, kailan natin magbilang ng buwan, no? So, for example, for this particular instance, binili mo yan ng September 1, 2022. Tapos, kailan ba dated yung bonds na yan? Sabi dito, they are dated January 1, 2020. So, i-compute natin ilan na ba yung na elapse okay na uh, term para makuha natin yung remaining term okay so yung full term ng bonds is 5 years multiply that by 12 that's 60 months so ilan na lang ba yung remaining term let's try to compute remaining term so dated 2020 yan so for the full year of 2020 12 months na yan okay for the full year of 2021 12 months ulit yun and then eventually nung pinurchase mo yan ng 2022 Okay, basically, pinurchase mo yun ng September 1 or end ng August. So, 8 months na yun nakalipas, 4 months na lang yung remaining. Ah, sorry. So, 8 months na yun nakalipas. No? So, 8 months. So, yung total elapsed okay, term is actually already 32. Versus your full term, ilang months yun? 60 months, di ba? Kasi 5 years times 12. Yan, so, 60 months. So, ilan na lang yung remaining term mo? That would basically be 60 minus 32, 28 months na lang. Okay, 28 months na lang yung remaining term. So, yung discount mo na 28,000, i-divide mo yan by 28 months. Okay. So, remaining 28 months. Tapos, um, you amortize using the elapsed term in 2022. So, pinurchase mo yan ng September, 20, September 1, 2022. Ilang months yung nakalipas up until December 31, 2022? Ilan? Four months, no? Four months. So, September, October, November, December. Okay, so nagbilang lang tayo, four months. So, that means to say, magkano yung amortization ng discount natin? 28 divided by 28 multiplied by 4. Tama? So, that's basically 4,000. So, ano yung gagawin mo dito? So, meron kang amortization ng discount. Okay, remember, discount. 
So, i-adjust natin yung cost natin, yung initial measurement natin. So, our reference book value, get the cost. Okay? And then, since discount yan, the amortization of this discount is an addition to the carrying amount of the debt instrument. So, i-add natin yung 4,000. Okay? So, 376 yung reference book value natin. And then, kunin natin yung quoted price or basically yung market value natin at year end. No? So, for PQR, yan, 98. 98 daw yung quoted price. So, that's basically 0 0.98. Yan, 0 0.98. Market value, kunin mo yung face, multiply mo sa quoted price, which is 392. Oh, yan, that's basically it. Tapos na tayo. So, mer meron na tayo lahat ng available information. No? And then, i-compute na natin. Okay, compute na natin. So, ito na lang yung remaining na i-compute natin. So, unrealized gains and losses ng OCI natin sa statement of comprehensive income for the current year. Kunin mo yung market value less your reference book value, which is the one which has been adjusted. No? So, initial carrying amount uh, adjusted for the amortization of the discount or the premium. So, meron ka 16,000 dyan na gain. In terms of the accumulated okay, unrealized gains and losses sa OCI, Basically, for FBOCI, for this particular um, example, kunin mo lang yung 16,000. Okay? Kasi nung record mo yan, as a separate component of equity, lalabas yan sa SCI, or Statement of Comprehensive Income, and then ma-accumulate yan sa Statement of Financial Position, which is 16,000 din. O yan. Simple lang. No? So kunin natin yung total, and then kunin natin yung grand total para makuha na natin yung sagot. So yung sum for our uh, debt, Yan, so, 1616. So, these are our totals. And then, yung grand totals natin, kunin lang natin. So, kunin natin yung para sa equity, add natin sa debt. So, negative 33.050 for uh, unrealized gains and losses sa PNL. And then, ilagay na rin natin yung formula for OCI. So, for OCI, okay, for the statement of comprehensive income for the current year, positive 933,000, no? Other comprehensive income or gain yung i-recognize natin. And then, yung accumulated okay, na nakapresenta sa ating balance sheet would be 1.01 1.101 yan, million na unrealized holding gain as part of our OCI investments. So, ano ba talaga yung tinatanong ng problem? Dalawa lang naman ata, sir. So, number one, unrealized holding gain to be reported. In the income statement, actually unrealized holding gain or loss na dapat yan, no? So we actually have an unrealized holding loss of 33,050. So ito na yung sagot natin for number one. And then the second requirement, unrealized holding loss. Actually, gain or loss na dapat yan. To be reported in the 2022 balance sheet. So ito na yung sagot natin. 1,101,000. Yan. Okay. Ayan, so that's basically our comprehensive problem. No, medyo mahaba talaga siya. Kasi uh, in terms of um, presentation of auditing problems, uh, again, as we mentioned, tinetest tayo on how well we recall okay, the comprehensive set of concepts na kailangan mong i-apply pagdating mo sa solving, sa solution. Okay, so primarily, dapat master mo yung financial accounting concepts mo. And then secondarily, dapat patient ka. Okay, dapat tsatsagain mo. Kasi pag hindi ka patient, okay, pag minental mo lahat nito, okay, madalas, okay, I've also been a victim to this, kapag minimental ko yung mga calculation, hindi ko pinipresent at may own solutions, nasasayang yung oras. Kasi pagdating sa CPA board exam naman, okay, I'm assuming that majority of the audience here are CPA candidates as well. No? Pagdating sa CPA board exam, multiple choice naman yan. So what if nakakuha ka dito ng answer mo na hindi tugma doon sa multiple choice? So, ang gagawin mo doon, first step would be to revisit your solution. Di ba? Eh, paano kung minental mo, wala kang solution? So, babalikan mo ulit yung analysis mo. So, masasayangan na yung oras mo. So, be patient. Okay? Always ensure na good form yung solution mo. Kahit na hindi good form yan, basta naiintindihan mo, okay lang. As long as mababalikan mo yung solution mo. Para pagdating ng final answer, pag hindi tumugma yung sagot mo doon sa multiple choice, mababalikan mo. Unang-una, may ensure mo yung accuracy. Secondarily, makakatipid ka ng oras kasi mababalikan mo yung solution mo, ma-identify mo kung ano yung mga kailangang balikan. Okay? So for this particular example, for example, hindi ko alam yung reference book value nito. At yung sa unang pasada ko ng problem, hindi ko, hindi ko maalala kung paano yung computation ng reference book value ng 
uh, FVOCI para ma-compute ko yung unrealized gains and losses. So one of my tips is of course for you to have your own solution, no? Dapat maintindihan mo yung solution mo. And for example, um, sure ka na dun sa mga iba mo ang uh, sagot dito or iba pang solution. So makakatipid ka ng oras kasi yung babalikan mo na lang would be the reference book value. So ito na lang yung babalikan mo. So tipid ka ng oras and then ma-insure mo, mahihimay mo yung problem, mabibreakdown mo in terms of what you actually are sure of versus those items na medyo unsure ka. Okay. Hindi naman kasi natin masasabi talaga yan na maalala mo lahat. Pero okay, doing a good form solution would definitely help you guys okay if you are a CPA candidate no um planning to take up the CPA boards okay oh yeah medyo medyo mahaba tong problem na to pero it's basically an application of our classification uh classifications as well as an application of the accounting implications kung ano ba naman kung ano ba yung implication non accounting wise okay pagdating sa classification Alright, so medyo mahaba yan. Pero basically, I think you can rewatch naman the recording of this uh, particular webinar. So if you have any like clarifications in that, you might uh, you can reach out to me. No, feel free to reach out to me via Facebook. Okay lang din naman. Okay. So that's the first problem. <laughs> medyo mahaba, no? We only have a few more uh, minutes remaining. Pero kaya pa naman. I think makaisingit pa natin yung isa pang comprehensive problem. So let's proceed to the next problem no which is investment in associate so hopefully we've been able to refresh our memory on the concepts of investments no particularly on classification and in calculation of your unrealized gains and losses in profit uh, in the income statement as well as in the balance sheet okay so let me present my powerpoint again okay there you go Sige, continue tayo. I think uh, we'd only be able to manage up until this topic. No? I've still prepared uh, a reclassification topic about uh, debt reclassifications, pero let's try to see if kaya pa. Sige, so in auditing of ano tayo? investments in associates. No? Actually, investments in associates are a pretty straightforward concept. No? So if you guys can remember in your financial accounting and reporting na subjects, okay? investments in associates, that's one of the, for me personally, more fun okay problems to solve kasi madali lang madali lang kunin mo lang yung beginning mo add mo yung mga adjustments makukuha mo na and um, at least during my time yan medyo marami yung problems around investment and associates so uh, maraming discussions about concepts as well as in terms of the uh, pre-boards etc yan may mga topics around investments and associates so i had fun in solving investment and associates kasi madali lang no very very simple lang yung analysis pero let's try to recall kung paano ba yung mga kung paano ba natin solve yung investment associate natin and how do we apply that okay in terms of an illustrative problem okay so let's try to recall kung ano ba yung concept natin around investment associates no so an associate is an entity no including an unincorporated entity such as a partnership over which the investor has significant influence so itong significant influence na to that basically means you have power over the financial reporting, uh, financial as well as the operating policies of the investee, but not control. Okay, So, hindi mo kinukontrol yung investee, but you have uh, significant influence over those uh, financial and operating policies. So, significant influence is presumed to exist okay? by holding 20% or more. No? Keyword dito, presumed to exist. Okay? by holding 20% of or more of the voting power. So yung voting power na to, this is typically provided by holding ordinary shares, no? OS. So kapag may ordinary shares ka dyan, meron nakakabit dyan na voting rights typically. So if you hold 20% or more, you are presumed to exist to exercise a significant influence over your investee. So again, keyword dyan is presumed. At the onset, okay, meron kang significant influence. Pero kung wala kang significant influence, no? power as defined by the standard over the financial and operating policies of your investee, then the assumption of ha you having significant influence uh, by virtue of holding 20% or more can be denied. No? So, hindi mo i-account yun as your investment associate kasi wala kang significant influence. So, bottom line dyan, dapat ma-meet mo yung criteria ng standard. So, naka-define dun sa past 28 yung definition ng ating significant influence. Pero again, there is presumption 
there is a rebuttable presumption that you already have significant influence if you hold 20% or more. Okay, so pagdating natin sa problem solving, pag sinabi sa problem na you hold, 20, for example, 25% uh, of the voting power of, or, of the ordinary shares, ang assumption dyan, meron ka ng significant influence no? kapag hindi na sinabi nung problem. So again, um, recap tayo as, uh, as we've mentioned earlier, no? more than or equal to 20% but less than a controlling interest. Kasi pag may controlling interest ka na doon sa entity na yun, hindi mo na siya associate. No? Hindi mo na siya associate. Magiging subsidiary mo na siya. So instead of you applying the equity method as, we've, as we'll discuss later, ang magiging application mo na doon would be to consolidate okay, the financial statements of that particular uh, investee with your own financial statements. So magiging PFRS 10 na yung application mo, hindi na magiging past 28. No? So remember, uh, significant influence but not control or a controlling interest over the investee. Okay, so as we've mentioned already, ang investment associate mode that should be accounted for under the equity method, okay, which is defined and illustrated sa ating past 28, okay, our investment and associate na standard. So investments and associates, as we've mentioned, should be measured using or should be accounted for using the equity method. So the equity method, you start with the acquisition cost. Okay, so initially you recognize that cost and then you subsequently adjust okay, for the investor share in the change in the equity of the investee. Okay. So keyword dito, yung subsequent measurement mo, okay, you mirror the changes in the equity of the investee. So lahat ng changes dun sa equity ng investee, imi-mirror mo sa taas. So for example, meron kang investor, you purchased uh, voting rights dun sa investee mo, no? investee. So kung ano man yung galaw ng nasa ilalim, okay, imi-mirror mo sa taas. So kung gumagalaw yung equity balances ng investi mo, okay, imi-mirror mo yun sa paggalaw ng investment associate balance mo sa investor. Okay? That's the reason why equity method yung sinasabi kasi any changes in the equity balances of the investi, i-reflect mo sa investment balance mo kay investor. Okay? Kaya, kaya equity method yung term na ginamit sa standard. No? Equity method or equity pickup Garon yung accounting yan. Or um, sometimes it can also be called one-line consolidation. No? Kasi basically the concepts behind investments in associates and investments in subsidiaries, if you guys are also already familiar with your advanced uh, financial accounting and reporting subject, they basically are related with each other. So kung nagko-consolidate ka line by line sa mga subsidiaries mo for your investment in associates, no? nagko-consolidate ka, a quote unquote consolidate ha? pero equity method yung application mo pero one line lang yung consolidation mo quote unquote kasi pinipick up mo lang yung movement ng investi mo papunta sa investor okay so later on na illustrate natin kamukha din ng subsidiary kasi magkakaroon din tayo ng mga implied goodwill etc okay so that's basically the basic premise no of the equity method of accounting so continued, paano natin i-compute actually yung balance natin sa investment and associate? So we could illustrate that by a T-account, no? which will later on apply dun sa ating um, illustrative problem. So kapag meron kang investment and associate, okay, you start okay, with your beginning balance definitely kasi asset yan, okay, debit, sa debit mo siya ilagay. Okay. And then any share in the profit, so ito PNL to ha, any share in the profit you add to the balance, any share in the loss you deduct from the balance. So that's basically mirroring the movement in the equity in the retained earnings okay, of your investee. And then additionally, sabi nga natin, any change in the equity. So kapag may mga OCI changes din yung investee mo, okay, you also adjust okay, your investment and associate balance. So you recognize a share in the OCI kapag may income, other comprehensive income, pero kapag may other comprehensive loss, okay, you also recognize it deduct mo sa investment and associate balance mo at the investor level okay and then sec uh, uh, secondarily no kapag may share ka in the dividends okay kapag nag declare and nag pay out yung ng dividends yung iyong investee you deduct that from the investment and associate balance so dun sa t account mo okay lalagay mo yan sa credit balance and then eventually makukuha mo yung ending balance which is uh, lalagay mo sa credit account a uh, credit balancing amount dito Diba? Very straightforward. Medyo marami na ng, marami ng problems ako na-encounter na ganyan lang yung tinatanong. So it's a very straightforward uh, concept. But in terms of the investment income, 
Okay, investment income, how do we actually compute for the adjusted okay, investment income coming from our holding in that particular associate? So profit and loss lang iusapan natin dito no? kasi um, investment income tayo. So any share in the losses, you also recognize. Yeah? So kapag may loss yung invest mo, mag-recognize ka rin, debit ka. Mag-debit ka ng uh, share in the loss as part of your investment income. Kapag may share in the profit ka naman, of course, credit balance ka dyan. Okay, I-recognize mo as part of your profit and loss account. An uh, another concept behind no? adjusting our investment income coming from our investee are actually our fair value adjustments. So ito bang mga fair value adjustments, these are basically differences okay? between the carrying amount of the investee's assets versus its fair values at the date of acquisition. So at the date of acquisition, for example, you purchased an investment and associate balance as of today. Ito check mo yung libro ng investi mo. You look at the book values of the investee's balance sheet and then you compare that with a fair value report. So kapag nakita mo na iba yung fair values ng assets niya versus its book values, magkakaroon ka ng fair value adjustments. Okay? It's either undervaluation or overvaluation. So naandito. Either debit or credit. So explain lang natin. So kapag mas mataas yung fair value ng asset ng investi mo kesa sa carrying amount or the book value, okay, that means to say that this particular asset is undervalued. Undervalued yan kasi yung carrying amount na nasa libro is basically lower than the fair value. So that's what we call undervaluation. So sir, bakit po ba yun magiging deduction sa share in the profit sa ating investee? If you come to think of it, okay, the equity method of accounting okay, basically wants us to mirror the movement in the equity of the investee okay, as, as, as close as possible to the fair value. So kapag may mga fair value adjustments tayo dyan, ang goal natin would basically be to capture those fair value, uh, the fair value amount of that particular um, investee's assets and we recognize that as part of our investment income, as an adjustment to our investment income na i-adjust din natin dun sa ating uh, investment balance. Okay? So itong share in profit and loss natin dito na nakikita na sa T-account ng invest, uh, investment associate natin, that's already adjusted for fair valuation adjustments. No? So adjusted na yan. Okay? So yung mga fair valuation adjustments natin na dito, Okay. Both na-adjust yung investment income and na-affect na -affect din yung investment in associate balance natin. The investment balance which is being presented in the statement of financial position. Now, going back to the concept, no, bakit nga ba natin dinidebit yung undervaluation ng asset natin? Sa investment income, bakit ba natin dinidedact yan sa share in the profit? Okay. Usually, I come to um, when I analyze this particular um, analogy, okay, ang iniisip ko dito, Imagine that the depreciation, so for example, imagine this is a depreciable asset. No? For example, this is a machine. So if the fair value of the machine is greater than the carrying amount, that means to say na yung depreciation ng machine dun sa libro ng investi is based on the carrying amount, di ba? So that means to say that the depreciation okay, of the machine in the investi's books is understated if we try to compare it with the fair value. And going back to our concepts, as much as possible, may mirror natin up on, and um, ang base natin would be the fair value. No? So magiging understated yung depreciation expense nung sa libro ng investee. That means to say, babawasan natin yung investment ng investee. Di ba? Kasi understated yung depreciation expense. If we try to base it uh, versus uh, fair value versus the carrying amount. Kasi mas mababa yung carrying amount which has been the basis of the depreciation na ni-record ng investee. Okay? So in that case, kapag undervaluation ng machine, okay, ang iniisip ko dyan, undervalued yung depreciation, kaya babawasan ko yung share in profit. Okay? Kaya dadagdagan ko yung depreciation expense which basically translates to a reduction in the profit of the investee. Okay? And then eventually, mababawasan din yung share ko sa investor level. Okay. And then balik tarin mo na lang. Kapag overvaluation naman, mas mataas yung carrying amount versus your fair value. Or this is the book value. No? Pag mas mataas yung book value versus the fair value, then kabalik taran din. Magiging overstated 
Okay, overstated yung depreciation kasi mas mataas yung carrying amount which has been the basis of the depreciation expense versus the fair value. Okay, ganyan lang yung analysis. So kapag undervalued, reduction yan sa share in the profit. Kapag overvalued, you add that in the share in the profit to get the adjusted amounts. Okay? Okay, how about intercompany transactions? Uh, this is what I've mentioned what I've been mentioning a while ago, no? The concepts okay, behind equity method and uh, consolidation are pretty similar with each other. So pag magkakaroon ka rin ng intercompany transactions between your investor and investee, you should also adjust for your share in the investment income, uh, share in the profit or loss of the investee, i-adjust mo rin yung share in the profit and loss mo dun para ma-adjust mo yung investment income. So if you have intercompany transactions okay, between the investor and the investee, uh, the main rule of thumb there is to eliminate the unrealized profit. So typically naman, nagbibenta yan at a profit. No? So kapag may hindi ka, ka pa nabenta dun sa intercompany balances mo na yun, that's basically unrealized profit at the end of the year, kailangan mong eliminate. Okay? So babawasan mo yung share in your profit. And eventually, kapag nabenta mo na, okay, yung intercompany balance niya, for example, it's inventory, no? nabenta mo subsequently in the next year, then your share in the profit and loss of the invest of the associate would also be adjusted for the realized profit na nakakabit dun sa intercompany balance or transaction na yun. Okay. So at the onset, kapag may mga unrealized profits tayo, ididedact natin and then i-adjust natin, i-add natin kapag na-realize na eventually. Okay. So that's basically how you compute your investment income. Again, all of these adjustments will eventually be impacting your investment and associate balance kasi mare-reflect yan dito. Okay sa PNL na adjustments natin. Okay, how about uh, the concept of implied goodwill, no? Sabi natin kanina, again as I've mentioned, okay, meron pwede ring magkaroon ng implied goodwill pagdating sa investment associate. It's pretty related okay, or pretty similar with how we compute your goodwill pagdating mo sa business combinations no PFRS3 or PFRS10 consolidations, no? So you start with the acquisition cost first. So, magkano yung pinambili mo dun sa investment and associate mo? Iless mo ngayon yung book value of the net assets acquired or BVNA. So, any difference you get, okay, yan yung difference ng acquisition cost versus or book value. Pero if you guys can recall, okay, para makuha mo yung goodwill or yung excess of fair value over cost, you basically compare your acquisition cost versus the fair value of the net assets acquired. So, since book value yung initial na ginamit natin dito, Okay, i-adjust pa natin yun using the fair value adjustment. So, ito na yung mga fair value adjustments natin. So, if we have undervalued assets, no, ididedact natin yun dun sa difference. And if we have overvalued assets, i-add natin yun dun sa difference. Basically, just the opposite of each other. Okay, so, ang ibig sabihin nito, kapag meron kang asset na mas mataas yung fair value kaysa sa carrying amount or sa book value, ang ibig sabihin nun, a portion of the acquisition cost um, has been or is attributable to this difference. Kaya mo ididak itong difference na to. Okay? Yung undervaluation difference, ididak mo dito sa initial difference na na-compute natin dito. Okay? That's the reason why, babalik tarin mo rin yan kapag overvaluation, no? A portion of the acquisition cost or a portion of the book value is attributable to the overvaluation. Kaya i-add back mo siya. Okay? So any difference, okay, will result to either implied goodwill or excess of fair value over cost. Okay. So kapag mas mataas yung acquisition cost mo versus your book value of net assets, even after factoring in your fair value adjustments, magkakaroon ka ng implied goodwill. So tinatawag natin yan na implied goodwill. If your cost is basically higher than your fair value, magkakaroon ka dyan ng goodwill, di ba? Under your consolidation topic. Pero since we are under the investments and associates na uh, standard, Implied goodwill yung tawag natin dyan. Sir, bakit implied? Kasi we do not recognize it separately. Okay? Unlike your consolidation topic, okay? your line-by-line -line consolidation, nag-recognize ka separately ng goodwill. For this instance, okay? implied goodwill lang yung ref, uh, magiging terminology natin dyan kasi we do not recognize that separately. So itong implied goodwill na yan, since mas mataas yung cost natin versus our fair value, Okay, nakapasok yan sa acquisition cost actually. No? So kung ano man yung makompute mo dito sa implied goodwill na yan, effectively, nakapaloob yan. Kung baga, nakabaon yan dun sa acquisition cost natin. Hindi natin yan i-recognize separately. So, ano yung magiging impact nun? Magiging impact yun 
or magkakaroon ng impact yun eventually kapag magkakaroon ka na ng impairment. Kasi um, in impairing, in impairment for um, subsidiaries or consolidations, no? yung line-by-line line consolidation, una mo munang ini-exhaust yung balance ng goodwill mo. Okay? Pero in this instance, kapag implied goodwill yan, okay, hindi mo na hinihiwala yung goodwill mo. So i-impair mo yung buong cost mo or yung buong balance mo ng investment and associate mo. Okay. So just remember, yeah, do not recognize it separately. It is already part of the investment balance. Okay. Now, in terms, kapag mas mataas naman yung fair value versus the cost, okay, magkakaroon ka ng excess of the fair value over the cost. Okay. And kung ano man yung amount na makuha mo dito, okay, you recognize it immediately as part of profit or loss in the period of acquisition. So this is similar with your bargain purchase, no? your bargain purchase na nangyayari kapag mas mataas yung fair value ng net assets na in-acquire mo versus your acquisition cost for the consolidation. No? Pag na-under PFRS 3 ka or PFRS 10. Okay. In this instance, same treatment. No? Kapag mas mataas yung fair value natin versus our cost, okay, that means to say meron tayong sort of bargain kaya na i-recognize natin as part of our profit or loss. So kasama yan sa investment income in the year of acquisition. Okay, just remember that. No? Just remember that. Okay, last uh, theoretical discussion tayo, then proceed tayo dun sa illustrative problem and then maybe I think we can wrap up on that already. So sabi natin kanina, pwede rin magkaroon ng intercompany transactions, di ba? Yung ating investee at investor. So let's try to illustrate. So pwede maging downstream or upstream yan. So if you have the investor here and you have the associate here, okay, pag nagbenta ng asset, yung associate kay investor, that will basically be termed as an upstream transaction. Okay. The other way around, kapag nagbenta si investor kay associate, magiging downstream naman yan. So ang sabi natin, kapag may gross profit or kapag may profit na nakasama dito, you eliminate that. Okay, you eliminate that. Tatanggalin mo yung profit na yun, yung unrealized profit na yun from the um, associate's uh, profit or loss before you recognize your share in that profit or loss. So tatanggalin mo basically. Okay, kasi unrealized pa. Ang ibig sabihin nun, within this particular um corporate structure no yung unrealized profit mo so ibig sabihin hindi pa nabebenta ni investor sa labas ah, so kapag bumili yung investor from the associate na for example inventory the associate marked up the price no so pag for example may gross profit yung associate ton ang ibig sabihin noon madu double count mo yung accounting mo so for example meron kang gross profit diyan na 10 pesos nagbenta ka kay investor Pero si investor hindi pa niya nabenta sa labas yung inventory item na yun. That means to say, this 10 pesos is unrealized profit. Tapos kapag hindi mo in yan, pag kinukuha mo yung share mo sa profit and loss ni associate, no, you as the investor, kapag hindi mo in yan, it's as if double count mo. Okay? Kasi within this group, uh, within this corporate structure, okay, hindi pa talaga na-realize yung profit na yan. So tatanggalin natin yung uh, 10 pesos na unrealized profit natin dyan. So, Paano natin i-account? Sabi natin kanina, okay, the unrealized profit okay, from upstream and downstream. So same yung magiging treatment natin actually dyan, no Must be eliminated before you compute for your share in the profit or loss of your associate. Okay? And then eventually, kapag nabenta na yan, subsequently, the realized profit must also be factored into the computation of the profit or loss. Okay? Sige. Sige. Uh, I think we can illustrate this better by having a problem which I think would be the last one for this webinar. No? Let's try. Ito. Okay, let's try to illustrate by solving a problem. No? So problem to tayo. So investment is associate na lang yung ating magiging last discussion. Okay? Ayan, I'm currently sharing my screen. Hopefully you guys can see it. Tama, no? Let me, wait, let me double check actually. So I'm sharing my Excel. Tama? Okay. So I'm sharing my Excel file. So let's try to solve. Let's try to read the problem, digest, and solve. Okay. So ito, it is also a pretty long problem for uh, investment and associate na topic. No? So let's try to factor in everything that we've discussed and, okay, and try to solve the problem. Of course, illustrate natin kung paano ba application natin. Okay, so for this particular no, problem, second problem, we only have a few minutes remaining. No? So on January 1, 2021, 
Engine Company acquired 25,000 ordinary shares out of 100,000 outstanding ordinary shares of Piston Incorporated for 4 million. Okay, so first sentence pa lang, himayin na natin yung problem. So sabi natin on January 1, so ano, ano sir yung January 1? That's the acquisition date. That's the initial, that's the date of initial acquisition. No? Engine company, sino si engine company? That's our investor. We It it acquired 25,000 ordinary shares. So again, yung sabi natin kanina, kapag ordinary shares yung ina-acquire ng company, okay, it is, may nakakabit kasi na voting rights typically dyan sa ordinary shares na yan. So we can safely assume that for this particular illustration or problem, you already effectively have 25,000 uh, voting rights over a total of 100,000 voting rights. So ibig sabihin niyan, meron kang 25% no, participation dun sa Uh, financial and operating policies ng NTT or ng investee which is si Piston. Okay, so that's the assumption. But that's of course rebatable pag may sinabi pang iba yung problem. Pero in this case, uh, I know that the problem did not mention anything no? in contradiction dun sa pagkakaroon ng significant influence. So it is assumed that engine has significant influence over Piston. Okay, so may significant influence. That's our assumption here. For 4 million pesos, yun yung acquisition cost. So remember, dun sa T-account natin, yan yung magiging beginning balance natin, di ba? That would be your acquisition cost. Okay, wait, let me... Okay, so I think I'm still good, no? Okay, hopefully you can see my screen, no? Hopefully I'm still good. And so that's 4 million. Acquisition cost, no? Next, Pistons, Assets and Liabilities. So sino ulit si Piston? It's our investee. So yung assets and liabilities ni Piston have uh, approximate their fair values except for the following items. So meron kang land, meron kang inventories, meron kang machinery. Okay, so those are your assets na iba yung book value versus your fair value. So ano ba yung mga differences dyan? So land, it has a carrying amount of 1.2 million pero meron na siyang fair value na 1.8. So anong, uh, anong case yan? So that's basically under, okay, under valuation. Okay, kasi mas mababa yung carry amount versus our fair value. Next asset natin is inventories, no? Inventories, meron kang carrying amount of 600,000 pesos, pero yung fair value mo is 400,000 pesos. So anong case naman 'yan? That's basically overvaluation kasi mas mataas, okay? Yung carrying amount versus the fair value, so overvalued yung inventories mo. Kasi pag i-recognize mo yan at the fair value, babawasan mo kaya overvalued yan. Same goes through with machinery. So 3 million with a fair value of 1.5. So it's overvalued by 1.5 million pesos. Okay? So those are our fair value adjustments. Okay. Next uh, next section tayo dito. The remaining useful life of the machinery is 10 years. Okay. Piston. Sales. So, so sino si Piston? It's our investee. No? Sales inventories using the first in first out method. And within 2021. Okay. Uh, it has already sold off its, all of its inventories existing at the date of acquisition. Pistons net assets have a book value of 12 million at the date of acquisition. So ano ba yung importance nitong first two sentences dito? So sabi natin kanina, yung fair value adjustments natin, okay, I, I don't think I've mentioned it, pero basically, we adjust, okay, we recognize the fair value adjustment as and when we are utilizing or realizing the benefits existing from those assets. Okay, So for land, Uh, typically, wala naman depreciation yan. So, i-recognize mo lang yung fair value adjustments when you eventually dispose of that land. So, pag binenta mo na yung land. For inventory, same case with land. Okay, hindi naman depreciable asset yan. Marirealize mo lang yung benefit coming from the inventories once you eventually sell those inventories. Um, on the other hand, for machinery or for other depreciable assets, okay, narirealize mo yung benefit coming from those assets as and when you are used, using them in your business. No? So, owner occupied yung mga yan. so those are ppe so you realize your fair value adjustment okay with the same pattern as your depreciation so kung ano yung depreciation method mo for that depreciable assets okay ganoon din yung recognition mo ng adjustments mo for your fair value adjustments okay so kung meron tayong 1.5 million na fair value adjustment diyan kunin natin yung share natin doon and then i-divide natin kung ano man yung depreciation method sabi dito 10 years yung useful life and then we can safely assume na straight lang yung gamit dyan. 
Okay. And then, on the other hand, yung inventory naman, binenta niya yung buong balance at the date of acquisition in 2021. That means to say, kailangan mo nang i-adjust yung fair value adjustment mo in connection with your inventories in 2021 as well. Okay. Actually, before we proceed with the other, ano, with the other um, pieces of information here, punta na agad tayo sa requirements. So sabi sa problem, determine the following. Determine the implied goodwill from the acquisition. That's number one. Or excess of fair value over cost. Number two, net share in the profit or the investment income in 2021. Number three, carrying amount as of 2021. Number four, net share in the profit in 2022. And then lastly, number five, carrying amount of the investment as of December 31, 2022. So actually, pwede natin i-group. No? I-group natin yung number two and four and then number three and five. Okay, so start na muna tayo before actually natin basahin yung iba pang ano dito, pieces of information. So para natin ma-solve yung number one, sabi natin kanina, we start with the acquisition cost, di ba? So magkano ba natin pinurchase yung investment na to? That's 4 million basically. Ito ang sinabi na sa problem sa taas. Tama? Okay, and then we deduct our book value of net assets acquired. So magkano ba yung book value ng assets na in-acquire natin? Hanapin natin sa problem, sinabi dito sa ilalim. Pistons net assets have a book value of 12 million. Okay. So 12 million, pero definitely hindi yan yung i-recognize mo in full kasi kinukuha mo lang yung share mo dyan. So i-multiply mo yan by 25%. Sir, paano nakuha yung 25%? 25,000 ordinary shares over a total of 100,000 outstanding ordinary shares. Okay? Alright. So magkano yan? That's 12 million times 25%. Okay. So the difference here Yeah, adjust mo pa yan using your fair value adjustments. Okay. So kunin mo yung difference dyan and then i-deduct mo yung or i-adjust mo for your fair value adjustments. So, FV adjustments for your land, for your inventory, and your machinery. Okay. For your land, ilan yung fair value adjustment po dyan? At the, at the date of acquisition, no? you have an overvaluation of How much? 600,000. So 1.8 million minus 1.2. So 600,000. Multiply that by 25%. Again, yung share mo lang yung kukunin mo dyan. No? So 600,000. Multiply that by 25%. Okay, so that's negative 150. Bakit negative 150? Yan na, na-explain na natin yan kanina. Since mas mataas yung fair value ng land versus its carrying amount, a portion of this difference, okay, is attributable to this land. Kaya tatanggalin natin yan para maka-arrive maka tayo sa implied goodwill eventually. Okay? How about inventory? Ito naman, an overvaluation naman siya. So, babalik ta rin lang natin. Kunin natin yung difference, which is 200,000. Kunin natin yung share natin, which is 25%. And then, since overvaluation siya, balik ta rin mo lang yung symbol. no? So, that's 200,000. Multiply that by 25%. That's 50,000. Same case with your machinery. Okay, machinery. Machinery has a difference of 1.5 million. Multiply that by your share of 25%. So 1.5 million times 25%. Okay, so that's 375. So magkano yung difference ito? Kunin mo yung main initial difference mo dito. Okay, i-add mo yung mga fair value adjustments mo. Okay. So ano yung positive na to that means to say that the implied goodwill okay coming from this transaction is 1.275 million This is your implied goodwill okay Okay this is your answer to number one actually So pina-compute la sa atin yung implied goodwill pero wala namang accounting issue diyan kasi sabi natin nung nag-purchase ka okay nung investment na to okay nakapasok nakapasok na yang implied goodwill na yan doon sa investment balance. So paano ba pinurchase to? Nag-debit ka ng investment in associate, di ba? Nag-debit ka by 4 million. And then nag-credit ka ng cash. For example, if cash yung purchase mo dyan, by 4 million as well. So wala kang makikita dyan na hiwalay na recognition ng goodwill. No? So walang accounting issue dyan. Pinacompute lang sa atin ng problem. Uh, tinetest tayo ng problem kung alam natin yung concept around implied goodwill, etc. Alright, so that's number one. Number two, sabi natin, i-group na natin yung number two and four, no? net share in the profit or loss of the associate in 2021 and in 2022. So share in the profit or loss of the associate 
Yan, madali na lang. Ito na yung last problem natin. Then I think we can already wrap up. So 2021, 2022. So, isayin na natin to. So lagay muna natin yung profit and loss ng associate natin. And then lagay natin yung percentage share. So yung percentage share natin dyan, 25%. Diba? Alam natin yan. Kanina. Okay? So 25% uh, percent each year kasi hindi naman nagbago. Okay? And then makuha natin yung unadjusted share in PNL. Okay? So il ilatag muna natin for 2021 muna. Saan ba yung um uh, saan ba yung ano natin? Saan ba yung profit natin? Dito sinabi sa problem, no. On December 31, 2021, okay, the company or the investee reported net income of 4 million, no, and declared in paid dividends of 1 million. So 4 million yung unadjusted na profit ng investee. 4 million. So kunin mo yung 4 million, multiply mo sa 25, makukuha mo yung unadjusted share in the profit or loss. Okay, and then i-adjust mo yan. Remember, meron kang fair value adjustments. And then meron ka bang intercompany transactions para i-adjust mo yung share in the profit or loss mo? Yes. Basahin natin to. During 2021, okay, the company or Piston or in the investee sold inventory costing 800,000 for 1.3 million to engine. So remember, si Piston yung investee, si engine yung investor, no? The inventory is unsold by the investor as of year end. So ang ibig sabihin yan, may unrealized profit ka from the intercompany transaction. Okay, so i-adjust natin later. I-adjust muna natin using your fair value adjustments. No? Okay, sige, i-wrap up na natin. So I, I think we are on time naman. Land. Okay, tapusin na lang natin to. So we have land. We have your uh, inventories. We have your machinery. So for the fair valuation adjustment of land, 2021, nabenta mo na ba yung land? Hindi pa. That means to say, hindi mo pa i-adjust sa 2021 yung fair value adjustment for, for your land. How about your inventory? Yes, nabenta na natin. So sabi natin kanina, kapag overvaluation, that's additional investment income adjustment. Okay? As a result of our fair valuation, um, uh, as a result of overvaluation, so that's additional. So kunin na lang natin sa taas. Okay, kinumpute na natin yung fair value adjustment natin coming from our inventory. So that's 50,000. Okay? Machinery naman. How about machinery? Kunin natin yung fair value adjustment natin which is 375,000. And then sabi natin, i-realize natin yan um, using the same pattern of depreciation for the machinery. So in this instance, i-divide natin sa 10. Bakit sir sa 10? Kasi 10 years yung useful life ng machinery. And we're assuming that it is depreciated using the straight line method of accounting for depreciation. Okay, so dinivide lang natin sa 10. So definitely, kapag double declining yan or um, uh, some of the year's digits, etc., ipapattern mo yung realization mo ng fair value adjustment mo with the depreciation pattern as in when you are utilizing the machinery. Okay, so those are your fair value adjustments. And then we also adjust for your intercompany. No? Adjustments for your upstream transaction. So sabi natin kanina, meron kang unrealized profit at year end. So magkano yung unrealized gross profit ni Invest dito? So that's 1.3 minus 800,000. So magkano yun? Compute natin dito. Minus 800,000. So that is 500,000 na unrealized profit. Pero kunin mo lang yung share mo dyan, definitely. Hindi mo naman i-eliminate sa buong yan. So i-multiply mo yan by 25%. So illustrate natin dito ha. So that's 1.3 million less okay 800,000. And then you multiply that by your share. Kunin mo lang diyan yung share mo using your voting rights. So that's 125,000. So this is unrealized profit actually. Yan tatanggalin mo siya. So that's a deduction, okay? And negative 125. Okay. And then definitely magkakaroon ng realized profit yan. Basahin pa natin ano ba nasabi dito. Um, on, April, uh, ito, on August 5, no, the inventory bought by engine from Piston was sold by engine. So, binenta na siya ng uh, investor. So, si investor company, binenta na niya yung inventory na nanggaling kay investee from the previous year, noong 2022. So, definitely, itong 125,000 na unrealized profit coming from the previous year, marirealize yan in 2022. So, lalagay mo lang dyan, 125. Okay? Oh, that's basically it. Share in PNL of the associate. Ito na yun. Sige, compute natin for 2021. For 2021, kunin mo itong 1 million 
Okay, i-add mo itong mga adjustments mo for 2021. So that's 962,500 pesos, no? For 2022 naman, lagay natin yung PNL ni Associate, ilan ba? Sabi mo may 500 uh, 5 million net income. So lagay mo. Tapos si compute mo basically yung share mo diyan. 5 million, okay. I-multiply mo yung 5 million by 25%, which is your participation or your share. And then, kunin mo yung fair value adjustments mo. Yung land, okay, sabi dito, binenta mo na siya ng 2022. So, kunin mo yung fair value adjustment mo for your land, which is basically a reduction in the uh, share in the profit or loss. Okay, so negative 150, ilalagay mo sa 2022. Kasi dyan mo lang siya, na-realize. Okay, for your inventory, wala ka na magiging adjustment kasi nabenta mo na yung buong balance ng inventory mo ng 2021. Whereas for your machinery, Okay, same case, no? 37,500 pa rin kasi tuloy-tuloy yung pa naman ni um, dinidepreciate yung machinery. So, meron pang 10 years yan. So, up until 2031 mo pa i-recognize yung adjustment mo sa machinery na yan. Okay, so that's basically it, no? Deduction sa land, addition sa machinery, and then sabi natin kanina, yung realized profit natin coming from the upstream transaction, lalagay na rin natin sa 2022. Okay? So, magkano yung net? Or magkano yung total? Sama natin. So that's 1.25 million plus your fair value adjustments together with your upstream adjustments. That's 1.262500 million. Okay, that's their adjusted share in the profit or loss. So that's basically our answers to number two and number three. Sorry, number four. O, oh, diba? And then last one. Okay, last one na tayo. Magiging investment balance na tayo. Associate balance. Okay. So, December 2021, uh, December 31, 2021, and then December 31, 2022. So, meron kang beginning, meron kang share in the profit or loss, less ka ng share in the dividends. Okay. And then, makuha mo yung ending. Okay. So, beginning balance natin, kunin natin for 2021, which is basically our acquisition cost. Tama? Tama? You add your share in the profit or loss, which is basically yung adjusted balance, less your share in the dividends. So remember, 25% lang i-recognize natin dyan. O, diretso na natin i-compute dito. Magkano yung dividends na sinabi nung 2021? So may net income na 4 million and then may dividends na 1 million. So kunin mo yung dividends mo na 1 million, multiply that by 25%, that's 250. Pero that's a reduction in the balance. If you guys can remember, kapag may dividends na nide-declare and binibayadan yung investee, okay, we reduce our investment in associate balance. Okay? So by using that pro forma formula, okay, makukuha natin yung ending balance natin. So this is our answer to number 3. Yan yung carrying amount natin. Okay? At the end of 2021. Okay? Compute naman natin yung carrying amount natin ng 2022. So kunin mo yung ending mo ng 2021. Add mo yung share in the profit or loss mo na nakinumpute mo dito nauna. And then, iless mo yung share in dividends. Magkano ba, sir, yung dividends? 1.4 million. Nakalagay na rin sa problem. So, that's negative 1.4 million. Kasi reduction nga. Multiply that by 25%. No? So, negative 350 yung share nat natin sa dividends ng investee. Okay. And then, compute lang natin. Same case. Isam lang natin lahat. That's basically your ending balance for your December 31, 2022 balance sheet in that particular instance. No, so this is number five already. Yeah, so effectively, na compute na natin lahat ng requirements. So we've been able to compute implied goodwill. We've been able to compute adjusted no share in the profit or loss of the associate. And then lastly, na compute narin natin yung investment and associate balance natin. Na ending kay making use of the adjusted. Shares in the profit and loss of the associate for each of the respective years, as well as deducting our dividends. Okay, so recap lang tayo kung ano yung na discuss natin for this particular session, no? For this particular webinar, balikan ko lang yung ating slides. So let me share my slides again. Then I think that would basically be it, no? And discard. Let me share again. Recap lang tayo and then I think we could end on that high note there. No? So balikan lang natin again. 
we would we focus on audit of investments no audit of equities associates and then meron din tayong debt although for this particular session hindi na natin na cover yung reclassifications no pero recap natin kung ano yung na-discuss natin again nag-discuss tayo what is a, an audit of financial statements no binalikan natin yung objective we basically mentioned that for you to be able to perform an audit of financial statements okay dapat alam mo yung financial accounting theory mo which is which we discussed no particularly for investments and then we also um, reviewed okay what actually are financial instruments what are our various classifications no coming from our different business models in uh, accounting for financial instruments so depending on the business model the classification follows suit so kung ano yung business model may classification and then there are a few exceptions okay Next, based on the classifications, okay, diniscuss din natin yung accounting treatment okay, nung yung mga investments na yun. So, depende dun sa classification natin, which is dependent on the business model or some of the few exceptions, dyan nag stem out yung ating accounting treatment. So, na-discuss din natin yan. And then afterwards, we've illustrated this via a comprehensive problem, which I, I, I'm hopeful na na-discuss natin maigi no, by that comprehensive problem. And then afterwards, nagproceed tayo sa investment and associate, no? Binalikan natin yung mga concepts natin under I past 28. Sinasabi natin that you have an associate if you have a significant influence, which is basically um, power over the financial and operating policies of the investee, but not controlling interest, no? And then it is presumed to occur if you hold 20% or more of the voting rights. Okay, but it's a rebuttable presumption. Pwedeng wala kang significant influence kahit na meron kang 20% of the voting power. It depends on the actual situation. Yan, so binalikan natin. We mentioned that the equity method should be applied to investment and associates. And then we have also illustrated how uh, the investment and associate balance is updated as well as how actually is the investment income computed. And then lastly, we also illustrated here uh, some of the Okay, issues regarding investment associate. So number one here is computation of implied goodwill or um, computation of excess of fair value over the cost. And then lastly, nag-illustrate din tayo ng upstream or downstream transactions. So kapag may mga unrealized profit tayo dyan, ini-eliminate natin yan. And then eventually kapag na-realize natin yan in the succeeding accounting periods, ina-adjust din natin yung ating share in the profit or loss of the associate. All right. Okay, that's uh, basically it. No, May, Meron pa supposedly tayong reclassification adjustments pero medyo mahaba kasi yun, so knowing that it's an auditing uh, discussion. So I think we can end on that topic. So hopefully that has been a fruitful discussion for us, no, for everyone. So I'm, ako, na-review din ako in terms of the concepts and hopefully you guys have also been reviewed in terms of how do you actually apply the financial uh, accounting concepts okay, in a particular or in a typical auditing problem scenario na medyo mahaba and medyo comprehensive yung mga requirements niya. Alright. I think that is basically it, no? Mm -mm. I, may, uh, I think I can turn it back to the host, no? Miss, si Ma'am Cyril, I think that is. Let me stop presenting my screen. Okay, ayan. Yes, that's that's basically the end. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ayan. So, ayan. So, uh, again, uh, good evening to everyone. No? I uh, hope you have a wonderful evening. And then you also noticed yung ating ano, presentation nung start nung, ano, no? start nung webinar. So, Rio actually does offer the best services in terms of CPA review in the Philippines. So, di ba? Saan ka pa? Yes, and thank you everyone and then have a wonderful evening.